Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for joining us this Thursday, February 16th, to talk with the DevSecOps Bunch Group. We're back again with another monthly webinar. We are in our third year of the DevSecOps Bunch. Uh, today, I've got a great friend joining me, Moat Snabil from BitRise, and we want to talk about productivity. So as he and I have been working with more and more of our customers, the key theme we're picking up now is about productivity gains, how to have high productivity on your team, how to make your pipelines run faster, how to really make it so it's easy for developers to write code as opposed to wrestle with the infrastructure. So today we'll be talking about that. We always give kind of 30 seconds to a minute for people to join. So I'll kind of talk and then we'll get started uh, shortly after that. Um, as, as we see what's going on in the marketplace, we're recognizing that tooling is not there for a general purpose. Tooling is there to really enable teams to do work. And the more we can automate the work, that means the developers and the security and the QA teams and DevOps teams can focus on things that really matter. And so it's really been amazing to see the level of automation growth over the past decade or so that allows us to have conversations like we're going to have today. So with that, we're going to get off and running, and I'll jump to introductions. Maltas, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes, uh, thanks, uh, Brian, for having me today. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Maltas, and I'm working as a developer advocate at Betrise. I am focusing more on helping mobile developers to accelerate their builds uh, to enhance the CICD workflow for mobile apps to be able to release uh, their mobile apps frequently, quickly, easily, and with secure application for sure. So I am very happy to be with you today and we will have like interesting topic and we will discuss a lot of things related to security with automation. And also we have a, a quick demo about how we can integrate now secure with Bitrise CI CD. So thank you for joining us. I'm Brian Reed. If you're new to the DevSecOps Bunch, I'm the monthly host, uh, talking head and love the topic of DevSecOps. My history in mobile dates back to BlackBerry, the original kind of mobile business platform. And I've been doing things around application development and security for uh, going on 25 years now. So thanks again for joining us. I think today's topic, uh, this month's topic is going to be great. As we usually do, quick intros for both of our companies. So now Secure is kind of the recognized industry experts in mobile security. We were actually born in 2009 in the early days of iOS and Android as a mobile forensics company. Uh, over the years, we built out a full solution suite. Uh, we're mobile first, mobile only. We've got automated testing, pen testing services, training, consulting, all those great things. We work a lot with the standards groups and so on and so forth. When we look at, at our work in the community, we spend a lot of time in community support. So from the standards perspective, we're the uh, God Mode sponsor and co-spec leaders for the OWASP MASVS and MASTG, the OWASP Mobile Project. We'll talk a little bit about that today. Also, uh, Google ADA, which is uh, security certification for Android and IOXT, which is mobile certification for the IOXT. We work with lots of the other tech community in this journey, and we're well recognized uh, for driving customer success. Quick note, there's a big announcement coming next week with the OWASP MASVS V2 update. You'll hear a little bit more about that today. Um, we'll want to give you a chance to check that out after today's webinar. So our customers are broad, right? Anyone who's regulated, anyone who's mobile first and mobile centric uh, tends to be our customers, uh, both in the US and around the world. We work with lots of the major global brands that you know and use every day. And I'm really excited that so many of our customers use this with BitRise as well. So I'm going to hand it over to Mats to tell us about BitRise. Yeah, exactly. So uh, actually, BitRise, we are trying to uh, ensure the confidence and velocity and the continuous improvement across all the cycle of a mobile product. So uh, BitRise is a mobile uh, CICD and a DevOps platform as a service. So mainly we are focusing on uh, um, like to be like an infrastructure or the place for all the mobile developers to, to be able to build and test the release and everything related to mobile apps and to uh, tell the to the customers to deliver the apps to the app stores. So we are working across entire the life cycle of the mobile application from the creation to operation and also uh, to release better performing apps faster. So um, next slide, please. Yeah, so mainly we are uh, focusing on six pillars or six value pillars. So the first one is IT ops automation. So you don't need to uh, think about your infrastructure. You don't need to think about your CI/CD pipeline or workflow. 
we have everything or we manage everything instead of you. So it's a platform as a service, as I mentioned. So you just need to connect to your mobile application or your code base and just you can build or start building your CI CD. So we are taking care of auto scale uh, the build infrastructure. And the second one is a workflow management. So you we you can manage in the visual way uh, your workflows, your CI CD pipelines, and implement the mobile DevOps for uh, and the automation for your mobile uh, team. The third one is a CI and test automation, which is like if you wanted to scale in your business and you wanted to run different or huge uh, test suites, so you can run uh, uh, or you can use your, our integration steps with Betrius, for example, with Source Lab, with Browser Stack for scaling your UI testing. And for app release management, we try to simplify the process for releasing a mobile app so by automating the process or even simplifying the uh, process of code signing of the mobile application. As we know, the headache for mobile apps, especially if you wanted to uh, deal with the provisioning profile, certificates, and the case stores as well. So we are managing all of this in automatic way. And the, uh, the fifth one is a security automation, which is what we are talking today about, that automating the security testing uh, before release this mobile app and moving it to the shift lift in the security with the automation workflows. And last but not least, the mobile uh, DevOps insights. So if you have all of these pillars, you should have insights and like statistics about what is the build performance and what are the the, the credits that you are using, what are the, the app performance and all of the things related to the insights for a mobile DevOps. Next slide, please. And uh, yeah, so Bitrise is a leader in automation and the CI CD platform. So it's mainly uh, uh, um, one of the top 20 uh, in the continuous deployment and software in the market. So uh, um, because of this, we are always take care about the uh, the mobile development, the mobile developers. This is uh, like Bitrise is built by developers to developers or to serve a mobile developers. We love mobile developers and we love mobile security teams. Thank you. And over uh, 100,000 of developers used or uh, use and love Betrius. So we are in the big names like N26. This is the digital uh, banking in Europe. But Puppet, it's uh, like uh, an application for learning. Uh, we are on Wise, DoorDash, Reddit, and more, more. So we are uh, like helping uh, or we are happy to help all of these developers to release uh, features, release mobile apps to the customers because also we are one of these customers that we are using these applications on a daily basis. So this is what uh, what we are, what, why we are loving Bitrise and working with Bitrise. So uh, as, as we got together to plan out our session, you know, we were both talking about um, how customers are now articulating the whole idea of making developers more productive, making security teams more productive. So we did a little DNA research on like, productivity and what does that really mean and where does that really go and you know if, if you come from the business side of the house or leadership side of the house peter drucker's um pretty famous for productivity is not about working harder it's about working smarter and more efficiently and i think when we look at the genesis of the whole strategy around devops that's very much what it's been i remember early on um some of the early folks like patrick dubois were talking about you know listen automate everything you can if you automate everything you can, then your people can do whatever's left. But why not think of it that way? And if you can get to the 80-20 rule of automation, that frees up time then for the team to focus on the code you need, which is really why you're there to build things. Yes. So as, as we think about it, we got two small stories for you to get rolling. And both of these organizations follow many of the, the practices that we talk about. So uh, picture yourself, the rise of COVID, your stores are shut down, you're a coffee retailer named Caribou Coffee and suddenly no one can come to your store. Now you've never been an e-commerce site, you've never had curbside or delivery, are you gonna survive or not as a coffee shop? So Caribou Coffee used COVID to really drive an entire business transformation in their strategy. And it started with remote productivity support for their development and their security team so they could continue to build and really create a transactional application uh, for mobile shopping for their coffee uh, and do that in a way where they could do rapid innovation. So whereas in the old world, they typically had quarterly release cycles, they needed to move into a, basically a biweekly release cycle and really drive the remote productivity 
of their security, their QA, their DevOps, and um, obviously their development team. So they leverage the best practices you're going to see today to make that happen. So there will be times in life when your business has to change quickly. And that's what productivity gains can do. So tell us a little bit about N26. Yeah, actually, also, um, one of the most important challenges usually for mobile apps, especially if it's uh, like a digital banking or something critical in, in the market, the release frequency. So N26, actually, the um, one of our um, the most important customers that we have. And actually, they mentioned that we helped them to increase the release frequency and the getting features and uh, updates into the hands of millions of live users faster. So Bitrise allows them to expand the business critical security process as well, because as you know, they are working on a banking. So they are most of the customers are using like passwords and uh, all the secret details that they have. Uh, so they need to be aware about security process inside the DevOps cycle. So the N26 uh, team has decreased the time they spend on testing by 80% from like you can say 20 uh, and have hours to half hour only. And over the past year, they cut down their build time by 50% and they manage the, uh, to triple their release frequency as well. Before we try, I... Yeah, so before we try, they, I think they release to the App Store every three weeks and with Betrayed, they apply the weekly release cadence, which is like a huge success for our platform and our team as well. Very, very impressive. Sorry, sorry, I jumped in there. That's that's the no. ideal world, right? So compress all the time in the build and the test process so you can focus on delivery. So um, some of you may have seen that IDC did a really interesting benchmark report last year. I pulled uh, a few things that point towards product productivity. And so when we think about what are what are the barriers to empowering developers, right? Because that's why we're here. DevOps and DevSecOps is about empowering developers to live, deliver functionality to business needs, preferably on time and on budget, you know, to meet the market requirements. So what gets in the way of that? Well, the first one is automation, right? So slow security scanning, you know, with, with lack of automation, lack of coding expertise, right? If I don't know how to write good code, I'm going to write bad code. Right. So that's the nature of training. Too many false positives and noisy scanning. Again, we've got another lack of skills. So all of these things are about everybody needs to come together and own security, but you need the tooling and the education and the knowledge to make it work. Now, that same group of folks, when you ask, what are you doing to improve your maturity? Interestingly enough, the first thing is integrated scanning in the CICD, which, of course, everybody would advocate. And we love to do that together with with Bitrise. Tracking, uh, using SBOMs to track vulnerabilities, doing source code reviews, which is really smart, uh, especially if you have complex code. Um, applying policy and using a policy-driven approach. We'll talk a little bit about that today. And integration into IDEs. Again, that's a high productivity thing, right? If you have tooling uh, within the IDE that enables security, and enables better code development, obviously everything's going to work better throughout the pipe. So there's some industry data. We could take a look now at our own pipelines. So if you're a frequent joiner of the DevSecOps bunch, you'll know we use a picture like this because there's lots of pipeline diagrams. This is the one we like to use every month. Um, and again, your pipeline stages may vary, but more often than not, you'll have something that looks like this. So um, perhaps you use some standards or you have some best practices your teams agree to. There's some training you do. There's you know specifying requirements from your product managers. The developers write code. They commit, they build, they test. Classic fast feedback loop, eventually get to staging, final testing, deploy, go into production. We know there's some uniques in the mobile world. Uh, clearly, you have the development environments you're working in, and you also have app stores for publishing. That's one place where we've seen BitRise blows away everybody else, uh, and we'll talk some more about that later. So this is kind of our pipeline, right? And we're going to use this to think about, well, what what is productivity kind of in this pipeline mean? So, so. What slows it down? Why are there productivity problems, Moet? Yeah, actually, um, without uh, applying the DevOps cycle or this process to be uh, somehow automated. So previously, maybe if you have a build or if you have a new features or new release, you wanted to release it maybe in next month, you, you finish ju just the build and then you are sending it to the security team, which is the traditional security, uh, like after after you build and maybe doing the test or the functional testing, now you wanted to test the application with the security uh, checks and all the other scanning. So I think this 
uh, mainly was taking like one or two weeks just to the security team to finish all the scanning and then sending sending back the report or the the result as a PDF or something like this. Then we need to take action uh, on on uh, after this uh, result or from this result, and then this take long or takes a long time uh, to to finish. So because of this, um, we we wanted to integrate the the, the security scanning or security checks inside the DevOps. So we wanted to apply the DevOps. We wanted to automate as much as we can, because now uh, now uh, if we want, for example, if we found a security issue or vulnerability on the deployment or monitoring, this will cost us. So for example, the latest stage of security testing impact costs and velocity. And this also can drive us to operational risks. But if we wanted to apply it, and for example, also uh, uh, the team will be frustrated and all the company because we have a security issues or we have a functional issues as well. And also at the end, the customers will be frustrated and maybe we will have a negative feedback on the App Store. So, and also maybe from the beginning, we have a lack of uh, like a standard uh, or, or standardization in BXC performance. So we didn't maybe uh, apply at the, at, the, at, the, at the beginning or we didn't agree as a team that we should have this standard. We should follow this standard in writing code, in uh, uh, doing a scanning for testing and also lack of skills. And maybe our team doesn't have the skills to be able to tackle the security issues or to be able to apply the DevSecOps. So all of these things, come to like friction in the pipeline is productivity losers. So now the developers are not productive and they are like um, thinking about, they are maybe um, maybe spending uh, like extra hours uh, to try to figure out what are the security problems and how we can find the, uh, the vulnerability in our code. Maybe it's something like displayed in the dynamic or when they install the application uh, on the device after they release to the app store, maybe they figure out a problem with the application. So because of this, the productivity uh, uh, should be like focus more on the DevSecOps, focus more on the DevOps practices and think about automated or automate across all the phases. For example, um, uh, you can automate as much as you can uh, from like code, uh, like from the first one when 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 the team collaborate together for uh, like putting the standard to together and then how they can train themselves, how we can find the suitable training for them, and then the requirement and design phase, how we can agree about this uh, phase. And then from the coding, we can start scanning our code across this standard. We can then commit and build and test the application. And this can be automated with the CI, CD, or the continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. And once we have this pipeline, which is this is a DevOps or a mobile DevOps, we can inject the security inside this life cycle, which is, will be a DevSecOps. By automating all the security practices and integrating uh, uh, tools such as a NowSecure, for example, for just sending, like building the application and sending the APK or the artifacts or the IPA to NowSecure. NowSecure from this step will start doing all the things and enable this will be enabled security across all the phases this will move the testing or the security testing uh, to shift uh, instead of testing right or testing after we release it to the production. So when we think about productivity, right, developer productivity is about helping developers write better code, right? So they can deliver their requirements on time and on budget. Pipeline productivity is kind of an emerging term or phrase, which is about empowering the entire team Right. So how do all tasks, all processes and all stakeholders in the team run more efficiently as a team? Right. And that's where the technology and the tooling comes in place. But that's also how you establish the processes you want to use to get be more effective in letting systems do a lot of the work for you. So when we think about productivity, as as we look at what's going on in the market, we've seen uh, collectively between our two organizations it's really kind of five pillars to really driving high productivity teams. So when you look at those top quartile performers, they tend to have these five things when it comes to a mobile perspective. So their development and security teams have the right knowledge and skills, and that means there's training built in. Remember with mobile, it's not just how do I develop on iOS or Android. Uh, your developers need to know the newer versions of the OSs that rev almost every year. We keep getting new languages like Flutter. So we need to be able to accommodate that continuous change that's actually occurring in the mobile realm, which tends to be a faster innovation cycle than other realms. The second one becomes standards. If both development, uh, if the development team, the architects and security are all using the same standards for what's 
a feature request, what's a requirement, how do you test for it, that standards creates alignment, which drives efficiency and productivity. You want to have build automation, which, which you know, Bitrise really looks at as pipeline as a service. And you want to have security automation, which we look at as AppSec as a service. And then finally, it's that readiness for that rapid release cycle where you don't want to get caught when iOS 15 or 16 or Android 12, 13, 14 are coming out. You want to be able to take advantage of those new feature sets and technologies that go with it. So organizations we see that, that follow these five best practices really do see that productivity gain because all the noise goes away. So developers are focused more on writing code and letting the systems do the hygiene for them around it. That means every role gets to save time. And that means you're basically releasing faster with higher quality releases. Your objective might be to release faster. Your objective might be to release higher quality. Your objective might be to do both. For most organizations, it's about frequency at high quality at the speed that you can get right for your organization. So I think Scott's got a great quote here, Mutz. Tell us about it. Yeah, actually, Scott Hanselman, he mentioned that the most powerful tool we have as a developers is automation. And here is not related to only test automation, but it's automating as much as we can, as we mentioned. So I believe uh, most of the companies now trying to have a developer productivity team or internal developer productivity team or platform engineering team. This is like the new era of like a, uh, SREs or DevOps, and then they have an internal productivity team. And then we are now hearing about the platform engineering team. All of these teams and um, like members inside these teams, the focus is about the developer productivity. They wanted to find or they, like they wanted to develop or implement the tools that will increase the developer productivity. Why? Because this is the most important things as a company. So don't spend or don't waste your time in like uh, fixing your CI server, for example, how we can update or, or maybe updating the, the infrastructure, updating the OS version. And this, because the developer hours is the most important things uh, for the developers in the companies, because this is like the, the main powers of, of the company. So automate as much as you can, try to figure out what are the best solutions or the suitable solution in your industry or your business. Try to automate the build uh, uh, process, the test process, the release process, or code signing, all the things related to your mobile apps to be able to deliver fast. Because as we know now, the competitors in the market are huge. You will find mainly five or six competitors in, your, in the same business. So you wanted to release your features faster. You wanted to release your mobile apps always frequently, and you wanted to have the, like, the clear process which is will be applied by a DevOps or DevSecOps by automating as much as we can. Okay, so we took a look at the pipeline diagram. We kind of talked about where the friction points were. We've talked about sort of automation for the rescue, uh, both for the pipeline and for security. So we'd like to kind of drill in on a handful of practical things that you ought to be doing in your team in order to achieve some of these goals, all about driving productivity. So you want to get us started on the first part here? Yes. So uh, with the mobile DevOps or a CI/CD for a mobile application, we usually uh, recommend that you should move to the cloud or a mobile focus CI/CD. Why? Because as I mentioned previously, so don't waste your uh, your time or the developer hours in uh, like uh, installing or fixing anything related. So I maybe CI server maybe the the CI server is not a stable or fragile. So you want to do the first uh, recommendation here is move to cloud and the mobile focus. As we know, most of the businesses are moving to cloud as a cloud services with the different vendors. But this is is about moving into cloud and the mobile focus CI CD because this will give you the infrastructure that is required for releasing and building mobile apps. The second one, once you have the CI CD in place and start building your workflow, you wanted to add the different steps for caching the app dependency. As we know, this is will save your time because when you are building your application, this uh, will maybe take time because maybe you have a huge or a lot of dependencies in your inside your code base or inside your application. So the first step, once you have the CI CD or start building your workflow using cache dependencies steps or mechanism to cache the builds for the next build. So once you have a next build, you will read from this cache dependencies if there is no any change. So we'll save time, huge time actually when building your next releases or next build and so on. The third one is continuous testing and automated tests, as we mentioned, or automated testing. As we mentioned, moving it to shift left in the testing in general, not only security. 
this will be applied by automating the functional or UI testing or end to end testing. So you wanted to find what is the regression scope or what is the, the UI scope for your application? What are the critical business cases that you wanted to automate? And then start applying continuous testing in each stage of your life cycle or the development. Adopt a regular release train. This is like a concept in a mobile that you can have something like the, the train. The, so you have a specific schedule days for each release. So if the feature is not tested or not ready for deployment, maybe this can be uh, uh, like uh, like uh, integrated or can be in the next uh, release train or in the next day. And the last one is a barrel build on multiple virtual machines. So you can imagine once maybe you are set up everything, you have different workflows, you have a CI CD pipeline in place, but maybe this, uh, once you are add more features, add, add more tests, this can, the build time can be increased. So maybe you wanted to think about another, um, this will be a challenge. So you know, wanted to think about another solution, for example, like build different tasks or different workflows or different build at the same time to save the time also on the CI server. So this is mainly how we can apply the pipeline as a service from code committed to release the mobile application. So here are a few tips about the success uh, between or with the pipeline and security automation. So from my perspective, I think don't uh, the first like uh, recommendation here, don't uh, slow down the build. So once you apply the security or maybe the test automation and, and uh, let's say, let's focus on a security, it checks here or security scanning. So once you applied it inside the, the workflow or the, the CICD, uh, the CICD workflow or the build, don't uh, slow down the build. You wanted to make sure that once you add the security, this is not affecting the build time. So you wanted to search about what is the suitable solution in this case and try to apply it. If needed, you can split the test. You can run barrel tests. This is also concept like a barrel build. So it's you can, if you can, with the, with the tool that you are using, you can split the test. Or maybe if you have like a cross-platform uh, application like Flutter application or React Native, maybe you can run in barrel diff two, two different workflows at the same time, one for iOS and one for Android to run the scanning security testing instead of running them in sequential. From my opinion also, don't block the release. So if you found, for example, a vulnerability inside your code or in the report, once you are using uh, any security tool, or for example, let's say uh, now secure, this just uh, or this need to be very limited cases, just should be the critical vulnerability. Because if you block the release or block that build for just you maybe find something as medium or low level from the severity. This also can be discussed from, from Brian as well, because we're, with now secure or maybe with, with our uh, like security tool, we can have a report, we can have the security uh, uh, security record or, or, or rank, and you can have also the severity of all this, the vulnerability that we have. So this should be done only for the critical vulnerability if we found already a security issue inside our uh, our application. And developers and security team should collaborate together to make the decision. This is uh, like, maybe this is a potential impact, this is a risk, and maybe this, the, 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 this will, maybe the users will be uh, blocked from if this uh, vulnerability or critical or security issue uh, happened. And also integrate the chat ops. Why, for example, Slack or Microsoft team, something like we can have, uh, like uh, once we run the security checks, we can send the result or the build uh, status to the team. Just once we finish it, just to, to take actions uh, quickly. So for example, if you find the critical vulnerability, so we can jump directly at the team and start fixing it and then rebuild the, 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 the build or the CI uh, build again to just to make sure that we fix it. So this is mainly about the uh, success of pipeline and security automation. And then we will, uh, like, I, I think also maybe Brian can add more about the collaboration between a security and, and, the, and the developer team and also how we can figure out the critical or how we can decide the critical vulnerability inside our application. Yeah, I think it's, it's a really good point. So excellent um, feedback here for the audience. I think it, when I look at, when I work with teams at the pipeline, oftentimes um, I feel like I'm a marriage counselor trying to help the Evan sec, you know, get on the same page. Some organizations, it's more seamless. Other organizations, it's more differentiated. And the challenge to a large extent is, is everybody on the same page with the same context or not? Do they begin with the same structure in mind? Do they begin with the same security requirements in mind or even the same definition for what security actually means? Whoops. And so let's let's look at a mobile app as a service. 
your mobile app tech as a service. And then we're going to talk about kind of two key areas that are emerging um, really unique places that you can have substantial impact, uh, both in freeing the, up the developer to be more productive and in terms of achieving that high quality bar you want to hit. So when we look at mobile app tech as a service, what we're really thinking about is how do I inject the right level of security at all the stages of the pipeline, right? So the first thing about application security is what should matter to me when I write an app? What requirements should I have for security? How am I going to test them? And so OWASP this week, while we're doing this session, I'm in Dublin at OWASP Global AppSec. This week, the latest OWASP mobile specification, OWASP MASVS V2, is being unveiled. And that's because for the past decade, a group has a, a group of rotating industry experts have been working on what are the best practices for how to design, code, and test a mobile application. So separate from the web working group, it's a mobile working group. The OSP MASV has been around for a while. This is a V2 refactor. It has the best practices. It is the cookbook. If you want to know what requirements to put in, you can read it. And it recognizes that not all applications are created the same. So there's different levels. So you can pick and choose what applies to your risk model. You do a little bit of threat modeling, and then you basically determine what the right um, security requirements are and then what the right test requirements are. So I've got OWASP. I'm going to use that to define my set of security best practices. Now, writing them down on paper is one thing. Building them into your policy and systems infrastructure is another. So there are technologies today like Now Secure where you can take that policy agreement leveraging OWASP or other and actually deploy it into the security automation. And I'm going to show you that in practice in a second here. So when you think about knowledge and execution, the best code is written by developers who know how to write secure code. Now, training can come in two parts. One part of training could be proactive training. One of our most popular training classes is the five most common security bugs developers write. It's like one hour, your developers watch the course video, and then those are five mistakes they won't make. And that could dramatically improve the quality of your code just by simply using that one course. So make sure that you proactively teach them how to do the right thing. And you don't have to send them to college for it and, and torture them with it. You want something that's easy to learn. Now, the second part of training is that when you generate tickets, make sure the tickets have just-in-time training with it. So your testing runs, your tickets are automatically generated in JIRA, whatever your ticketing system is. Those tickets should have remediation, instruction, sample code, and all that kind of stuff. So teach them right there in the moment of need. And so we're going to look at that here as a drill down in a little more detail. So I've got security, mobile app security as a service running. And within that, um, the, the new innovation that, that hit this past year in, in 2022 in the market that Now Secure and some other vendors have brought to, to Now Secure to mobile, others to web, is this idea of security policy automation. How do I get policy automation in my pipeline? So we're going to sit together and, you know, what are the security requirements? What are the coding practices? What are the testing practices? Up front, we're going to determine that. And then we're going to go ahead and configure it in the tools. So what is my P0 category? They're the must fix things where development isn't going to question whether it's really a bug or not. It's going to be automatically generated as a ticket as a must fix. The P1s might be, we're going to review it to evaluate the fix. And the P2s might be, dump it in the backlog and have the security team review it on your behalf. And so you can create the groupings of policy, and then you can label your individual findings or test results so that you can determine how to map them and how to escalate them. Uh, and make that work. So what you now have is not only do you have the, the alignment of the different teams, you have the systems automating the work related to the policy that you have defined. That brings you predictability, quality, and speed now because everybody began with the right thing in the first place, and the systems are just simply automatically executing it for you. So those debates around, should I fix this or not, most of those should go away because you already decided up front what matters and use the standard like OWASP to do it. Now, the second part here is thinking about remediation, right? So in this remediation, I should have just-in-time training. So when I get a new security bug, I need to see you know, where it is, what the evidence is, steps to reproduce, what have you, but I also need to know how to fix it. Odds are pretty good if I made the coding mistake, I may not know how to use that mobile API correctly. So ideally, the tickets being fed to that developer should include a written description of how to fix it, should include links to the relevant Apple iOS or Google Android documentation 
on how to properly use those APIs. And where possible, just give me some code samples that I can refer to or copy and modify to fit my particular code. Our customers have talked about mean time to remediation goes from days to hours to minutes or tens of minutes when that just-in-time training is included as in those tickets that are automatically generated. So we kind of gave you two snapshots here of some of the more detailed things you might want to try to do in your own pipeline. What we'd like to do is tell you a little bit about how BitRise and Now Secure work, and then we're going to roll into a demo. So real quick, tell us about BitRise. Yes, um, actually, as we mentioned, BitRise is a, a CI/CD platform as a service. So once you have an application, you can connect it through if you are uh, using a Bitbucket, GitHub, or GitLab. So we are working mainly with the three uh, vendors of the source code. And then you can start building your workflow. So we have different stages, as we mentioned in the previous slides. So we have a build. So this is an example for Android application. So we have a steps for building the application to like um, output the ABK to be able to send it to now secure for, uh, for, for security testing. So maybe you wanted to build the application, build the application for UI testing if you wanted to run UI testing in the pipeline as well. And Android sign, maybe if you wanted to sign your application to be ready for the App Store after that. Then in the, in the test stage, you start running the Android test and maybe you wanted to run the UI tester in Firebase on a source lab or any other uh, or app center, for example, or any other uh, uh, like device lab on the cloud. And then also you can add the security. So this is like injecting security uh, scanning and security testing inside your pipeline by adding the now secure uh, verified steps. This is an integration step from now secure, just so you can add it in the pipeline and then just to configure it with a, with a few inputs and then it will take the application ABK and send it to the now secure platform and start it scanning it there. Once you finish, maybe if there is all the steps finished successfully, the UI testing unit and the security testing, you can start deploying the application to the deploy to the Google Play Store, or maybe if you have a Huawei app gallery or to App Center for Android. And also we can send the Slack notification. As we mentioned, we can integrate the chat ops just to sending the immediate result about the, the build status or Microsoft team as you uh, as you like. And maybe also you can send it to the App Store as we mentioned, so, or maybe we can send it to the quality assurance for, or maybe your beta testers if you are already working with this platform for the beta testing uh, process. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so here we have two examples, one for iOS and one for Android, and we are using the same step. So the, the now security step is, is allowing us to send the IPA from iOS workflow or APK from Android. So maybe you can have different steps. So for example, for iOS, you wanted to run CocoaBots for installing the dependencies and regenerating or rec recreating the user schema, and then use Xcode archive and export a step for uh, archiving or for exporting the I IPA uh, application. And then the now secure will take it from this and start running on the now secure application. The other side, this is the same what we are saying here. We are building the Android. Maybe you can use a Gradle task or a Gradle build and run the Android, get the ABK, send it to now secure, and then we can uh, implement the workflow or we can just start from here to running our security testing. Make a slide. All righty. So I'm going to kind of roll into now secure a bit here. So now secure is a full solution suite. Um, we have platform for automation. I'm going to show you in a minute. That's our primary business around DevSecOps. We also do supply chain monitoring of the app stores, the 6 million apps and the public app stores. We have pen testing toolkits. We have pen testing services. We have academy training and we have a mobile verse, which is a, a customer community. Now, um, many of the best practices I listed before were a combination of platform, supply chain, and now Secure Academy training here. What we'd like to do is just take a second to drill down, and then we'll move into a demo. So now Secure Platform is basically much much like um, Bitrise's cloud-based SaaS platform. Now Secure uh, Security Platform is the same thing, SaaS-based. Um, your CI CD pipes the uh, binary to us after you build it. We run automation in the cloud. We have real device rigs that we install the app on and run in a real environment. And we do a combined battery of over 600 tests coming out of the OWASP MASVS. And we're looking for security, privacy, 
uh, compliance things, we're looking for data leakage. And we're also looking for app store blockers. Like, do you have the right minimum build version? Did you use uh, particular APIs or settings correctly based on Apple or Google documentation? Then we pipe the output right back into your ticketing system and into our own UX as well, or anywhere else you want it to go via API. So uh, much like Bitrise makes your build test cycle, simple, transparent, automated, parallelized, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're doing that with the security side of the house throughout the life cycle. So I think it's time for a demo. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and I will pass it back to you. Let's have okay. a look. Thank you. I will share my screen now. Can you see it? Yes, sir, we can see now. Okay, so this is mainly uh, from here, you can uh, redirect to your dashboard if you have different applications. So for example, I have here two sample application, one for uh, uh, iOS and one for Android. So here I have Ansive Bank, this is, it should be like unsecured application. And from here you can find all the builds that you have. And in the workflow, you can go to, to the workflow editor, which is like a visual UI editor by you can add or move or like rearrange any steps in your pipeline as we see in the uh, as we see in the image. So here, for example, uh, in the uh, now secure, you can have for sure different workflows: one for now secure, one for release to the app store, and different workflows. So in the now secure workflow, you can have. The Xcode archive step, and also we have a now secure uh, uh, verified integration step from now secure team. The input variables for this step only three uh, parameters or three inputs. You should have the Bitrise IPA and also the step, as we mentioned, is supporting the APK. So the APK can be from Gradle, Gradle Runner and the iOS can be from Xcode archive and export. So here we are taking the application both from the previous step. For example, if we go back to this step and go down, so here we will find that this step is generating output variables, which is the IBA bus, which is needed as an input in the now secure. So now we are using this environment variable and also we have a now secure API token, which is required to be able to send the IPA uh, through or via the, the API or now secure API. And also we should have a now secure platform group. So this are secrets and why secrets? Because this will not be, uh, or like sensitive. So this will not be exposed during you are running your CI and it will not be shown in the, the build log. So you should, because because of this, we are adding in secrets and not environment variables. So just to jump into secrets, you will find here a now secure API and add it as a secure. And also maybe you wanted to expose it during the pull request so we can, you can just enable this option. So we have here the now secure API and the group ID. This is the as simple as this is a straightforward integration and you can just run your test. So just to go back to the, the main page of the application and the click on a start or a schedule build, this will be triggered manually. So for sure also you can trigger your build based on the pull request, based on tags, based on any Git flow that you have in your team. And also here you can specifying the branch. So for example, it's main, it's master, it's a relays and so on. With the work uh, flow, you can select a now secure and then you can start the build. This build will be triggered and this, all the information that you have, this is the stack that you are using. For for example, um, maybe we, 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 we forget to mention that we usually have the latest version of Xcode and Mac OS machines. For example, here I am running on Ventura with Xcode 14.2 with M1 machine as well. So uh, recently we announced that we, we are supporting M1 or Apple Silicon M1 machine. So here's the machine just to, to build the fastest than the, 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 the Intel one. So now the build is running, the, the trigger is manually. And now we will figure out that all the steps like recreating the user schema. Now we are archiving and, ex and like and, and exporting the, the iOS application. And then after that, we will find the, the, the build. So just to save time, just so we can back uh, go back to the, the main page and just check the, the previous succeeded uh, build. And here you can find also, we already also uh, recently announced that we have a build group. So you can just grouping the steps just to jump directly to the step that you wanted to check. And in the now secure analysis, we send it using the ABI from now secure. And as I as I mentioned, the the the, the token is uh, uh, sensitive and secured and not displayed. And this is the IBA that we are created from the step for archiving. We have here also the response for now secure. 
And then you can jump directly to now secure. Here you can find the application that you have. For example, if you go to, to the unsafe bank, you can find that this is the analysis in progress. Now we uploaded the application to now secure platform. And now the application or the, the, the analysis starts in progress. And actually what I liked about the, uh, the now secure is the, the types of testing. So here we have a static analysis and dynamic analysis, because if you wanted to figure out or if you wanted to customize or build your own solution for running a dynamic analysis, if you search about it, you will find that you should have uh, a device labs, you should have a physical devices, you should have a lot of things to be able to run the application on real devices. But now secure, they have both. They are running the static analysis and dynamic analysis and they give you a report about the security score give you about the recommendation, the severity of the bugs and all the things related to uh, this build. So for example, we cannot check the previous one. So here, for example, it's telling me that this uh, build is included uh, uh, six vulnerabilities and I can go to, to the security report and then I can check what the problem in this one. So I think from here, Brian can also uh, like describe more about what we have now in the screen. Yeah, so whether you're looking in the now secure UX or you're looking in your build and ticketing system, again, what you'll see is we'll prioritize based on whatever your policy settings are. We talked about earlier um, each of the findings, and then with that, you get all the details, the steps to reproduce, the remediation resources, and everything else. We found a handful of issues. These issues, when you set your policy, you decided mattered, right? So you cared about production. You cared about... Um, symbols and so on and so forth. So we're finding those issues. The good news is this score is really high. This is a good quality application that really has some, you know, P3 type security issues that you very well could determine, you know, you want to, you want to fix, or you don't want to fix. As I said, you get the code samples the, and all the rest of the information you need in order to make the developer or enable the developer uh, to quickly do things. The good news is we do have customers that generate lots of high quality security scores and very few vulnerabilities. The bad news is we have lots of them that generate bad stuff. So Rivia is a demo application that's full of the train wreck. Um, mm -hmm. So as you go into Rivia, you're gonna find all kinds of nasty things uh, like unencrypted password over the network, right? So we're doing dynamic testing with authenticated logins and we'll find that. Um, we're looking at uh, PII, PHI, uh, another personal information and IP that might leak on the device in storage over the network uh, and so on and so forth. So as a function of all of that, you're really getting a, a, a unified view of where all your issues are. You can enumerate and find the code locations of each of those issues and then work your way through addressing them, uh, leveraging the instructions. So um, I think it's really great that Moax um, uh, has, has put together a demo for us today to really give people the power of, of what you can do between the two products. And all of this is about driving productivity, right? Yeah. And actually, just I, yeah, sorry, I just wanted to add one more thing that also uh, the, 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 the interesting part here that you are comparing against, the, for example, if you are building application inside the EU, which is should be. Uh, um, like sync with the GDPR, for example, or different regularity uh, options here. So this is also uh, like recommended here or displayed here. And with the code examples, this also is if I am not aware about what is wrong inside my uh, my test or my applications, this also gives me an indicator about, ah, okay, so I should take care about defining the uh, variables inside my application or how can I add the logging? Maybe I don't want it to log like uh, sensitive or uh, critical information because maybe someone can expose this information. And also here, I just selected different policy and also from here, you can reset the policy to the default one. So. Uh, so if you go back to uh, to the build, you will find that it's succeeded and it's now it's running uh, and now secure. And also maybe you can, um, this is also integrated with you don't want it to waste the time waiting the result. Maybe if it's taking a longer time on now secure, we finish the build, but you can check the result on now secure. And maybe you can sending also the result after that to your uh, team and stack or Microsoft team to just jump directly to the issues and start uh, fixing them. Thank you. I will stop sharing and it's... All right, let's go back and we're going to remind folks that we'll do some Q&A here at the end. So let's get back in here. We'll got a couple of summary items for you, then we'll roll into Q&A. We've got um, five, eight minutes left here. So 
move kind of quickly. So, you know, better together what we showed you today from the two organizations, right? So with BitRise, the DevOps platform, you get the acceleration, you get the speed, cutting down the build times as we talked about and with now secure, you get the security built in, which also gives you speed and reduce your costs. And all of this basically is plugging into the infrastructure and, and driving that productivity. Would you like to mention uh, briefly, we did a little case study at the front. Is there a second one you'd like to mention briefly now? Yes, actually, you um, like um, you can find all the customers' stories on our website. But actually, I just mentioned here the most critical or maybe important uh, user stories related to the security and like releasing uh, the application frequently and reducing the build time. As we mentioned in 26, they are focusing more in businesses' critical security process. Reddit as well, they start using our M1 machine, and this was uh, significantly changing all like like uh, helping them to reduce the build time and like releasing the features to the customers quickly and also generally is like starting using uh, Bitrise by saving or like the build was faster uh, uh, 20% uh, from the previous solution that they have and they also like deliver or, or, or like release a new application uh, from their uh, team which is like we are happy to hear something like this and if you wanted to check more about customer stories you can find all the customers or our awesome customers in this link and uh, i think you have some other resources for folks yes yes so for example we have also uh, like white papers or uh, businesses and the tech reports so how we can tra transition from apple m1 silicon or, or from sorry from intel to apple m1 silicon uh, what about the 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 measurement of a mobile devops how we can measure successes of um, mobile devops how we can inject security or as security for a mobile devops and all the reports can find in our white papers we also have a regular webinar maybe every month at least we can have a one webinar discussing all the things related to devops automation security release management and all the other things related to devops and also we have a blog we usually uh, release uh, recent uh, announcements about our recent product and all the like developer topics that uh, interesting for the mobile developers. So we talked a little bit about Caribou uh, earlier. You know, kind of two bookends here. You've got Allstate who wants really fast. Excuse me, uh, Bank on the left wants really fast. So they want ten minute scan cycles, test results quickly, fast feedback group loops, high accuracy. Those are the requirements Dev gave to the security team. And we're able to help them to live to deliver on that very, very fast cycle tuned to the mandatory regulatory requirements that are relevant in their financial institution. On the right-hand side, you've got Allstate. They're using OWASP as a standard. They're using NIST controls as a standard. And they built all of their security automation into the pipeline. So no humans are involved in testing any security anywhere except the occasional pen test. 80 to 90% of everything they need to security test for is built into the pipeline, which is very impressive uh, in terms of how they run at, at um, accelerated speed. And also, you might not think about as an innovative company, but they actually have built themselves or with their partners, they built hundreds of mobile apps along with their websites. So some other resources from Now Secure. We do have free training. We would encourage all of you to sign up for Now Secure Academy. You can go to academy.nowsecure.com. That is 60 hours of free training, whether you're a developer, a DevOps person, uh, or a security analyst, whether you're web skilled or mobile skilled and you're new to mobile, we can teach you your way into mobile, help you grow your skills in your career. It's all free. Sign up today and, and enjoy it. Um, we're doing a lot with GitHub these days. Uh, and so you can take advantage of uh, code scanning directly in the GitHub repo. And then finally, we've got a great DevSecOps guide that kind of guides you through the security tooling and security automation and an effective DevOps tool chain. Uh, you might find useful. We figure there's a number of DevOps people here, DevOps engineers and, and systems uh, architects. And so we encourage you to have a look at that. That will kind of help you with the best things to do with security at the various stages of your pipe. So with that, we are going to drop into Q&A. And so we'll take a couple questions and we'll go ahead and work our way through them. Uh, looks like the uh, first question is for you. So uh, what are what are the key components in your mind of a successful mobile DevSecOps strategy? Um, from my perspective, I think uh, first one, as we mentioned, collaboration and communication between the team. So encourage collaboration and communication with, with Agile process or any other process the team is using. But this is very important for DevOps and DevSecOps. So we should 
agree at the beginning about all the standards or all the, the process that we should apply in our application just to be like a baseline and then start building all the things together. The second one is a scalable infrastructure. We should have a stable, a reliable, a scalable infrastructure to be able to expand or to scale in our uh, application if we have uh, like um, different people joining our team or our team is a scaling or maybe the business itself is a scaling. So we should rely on stable and scalable and reliable infrastructure for our CI CD. Applying for sure, as we mentioned, continuous integration and the continuous delivery for automating the process as much as we can and remove the the silos between or the the the, the, the like the 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 walls between the teams and we are working together in one goal as we agreed at the beginning in our uh, communication or collaboration process automating testing for sure we should implement automating testing for uh end-to-end -end or functional security testing as well should be automated because this will save time and save cost as well we should also we should always think about the return of investment from this process. Is this return investment? This is something. Are we uh, are we saving times? Are we saving hours? Is or our are our developer satisfied with this process or not? Uh, and also uh, also like um, monitoring the performance for the, the application for the the CI uh, server. And last but not least, security for sure and the compliance. We should think about all of these things. These, I think, are the core components for successful uh, mobile DevOps strategy. Um, so I think we'll we'll take one more question here. It's a great one. It's uh, what metrics should be used to measure success of your mobile DevOps program? So why don't you go first for your metrics and I'll go for the security metrics to go with it. Okay. Um, I think the, the 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 first factor here or the metric is the time uh, time to market or the release frequency. So time to market, the me measuring the time to take it or take to uh, get the mobile apps from development to deployment. So for example, if we before applying DevOps or DevSecOps, maybe we are releasing now every six months, which is huge. The when then when we apply it and start like monitoring it for like four or three months, we can. Maybe we figure out that we we reduce the release time to be one month. Then after that, it's two weeks and one week. So this means that time to market now is like we are delivering our application quickly, and the release frequency itself is is increased. So this like one or two of the metrics, the app crashes and errors. If we don't have huge crashes or uh, like critical crashes on the app store this means that we applied uh, a good uh, security and automation uh, testing uh, plan or strategy inside our team speed and the performance if our application is behaving uh, uh, with a good performance this also because we take care about the performance and the, the building the features uh, uh, with the speed and with the good performance cost saving as i mentioned if we are saving costs and the return of investment as well. And at the end, for sure, the user satisfaction, if we have a good rate on the App Store, because as you know, rating the applications on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, this is the factor of, okay, is our application or people or our customers are loving our application. So user satisfaction, measuring the user satisfaction with a mobile app can provide valuable insights into the effectiveness of a mobile DevOps process. So a, a couple ones for security that we see in good DevSecOps shops. You may use some of these. You may use all of these. Um, so the security bug issue ticket rate. So at what rate versus build rate are you generating new security tickets? And is the volume of those tickets declining over time? Related to that is what is the ratio of security bug tickets to all bug tickets? So as you think about it, you're going to have a variety of quality tickets coming through from UX and other features. Is security similarly improving over time or security improving faster over time or is it getting worse over time, right? Because the continuous improvement is going to drive that. Um, so uh, the, the mean time to repair then of your security tickets as well as all your tickets, you should be tracking mean time to repair. Uh, if you're doing the just-in-time training, your mean time to repair should shorten. So your, your issue or defect density should be reduced and the mean time to repair should be reduced if you're effectively enabling your team. Um, last issue to watch is kind of the defect escape rate, right? As you mature your team, you know that um, uh, vulnerabilities can escape into the wild. You'll learn from that. You'll catch them in future releases. Um, so that's common for, for a, really a common QA-oriented uh, metric. 
Um, and one that the most advanced teams look at is the deferred rate. So when you have security issues, what percentage of them are being deferred because you're in a race to release? And how are you doing on cleaning up that backlog and getting to the point where you have almost no deferred rate? So those are all signs of the maturity of a pipeline. So uh, this has been a really great webinar. Thank you all for joining us today, our February DevSecOps Bunch, talking about productivity and productivity gains through the right tooling in your organization. Um, would you like to say a closing word as we wind down here? Uh, thank you. I really enjoyed the, all the information that we have. I learned a lot about the, actually it's a very interesting topic. And uh, nowadays it's very important for all the mobile teams to take care about or care about the security. So I hope that um, people learn something from uh, my side, at least that about that DevOps and how we can apply or inject in security inside the CICD pipeline. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. It's great as always to talk with Bitrise. Uh, their upcoming virtual sessions are great. I've signed up for a few of them myself to go learn. We encourage you to take advantage of those. Stay tuned next month. We got more DevSecOps Bunch coming next month and every month of the year. And with that, I wish you a great day from Dublin, Ireland at the OWASP Global Summit. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you.